Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Beautiful day going off here today. Very typical. Clouds, sunshine. Couldn't ask for anything better. Going to take another look at that Enjoy Bot. Follow up on the teardown we did a little while ago. See if we can get some different results. It's a jungle out there. So a couple weeks or so ago, tore this 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from EnjoyBot apart and showed you what it looked like inside. We and ran it through a couple of tests, had a couple of mixed results. Couldn't tell what the battery cells looked like, as you recall, as they were ground off all of their identification numbers to where had no ability to research what they were. And then we tried to get the low temperature disconnect to work and we couldn't do that. And right here is the low temperature charging disconnect probe. And ever since that last video, we moved this into production and have been using it every single day. The battery has worked absolutely fine. As you can see right now, it's about 93% full on its way to a full charge today. It has 300 watts of solar tied into it. And we moved it into this little 12 volt charging station with a Victron Energy Smart Solar Charge Controller, MPPT7515. Solar isolator switch, solar panel isolator switch. 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter, various breakers and fuses. And it's been in production every single day for the past couple of weeks. It has been working perfectly, have had no problems with it whatsoever. Been discharging it, oh, the top 20% or so of its capacity every single day for the past couple of weeks. No problems whatsoever, working absolutely as it should. I did hear back from EnjoyBot on that previous review that we did, and they were surprised that I couldn't get that low temperature to work. And then some of you also mentioned that that ice water test that I was dumping that probe into should have been salt ice water, which it actually was. I didn't mention that on the test but it was salt ice water and then some of you said that it should have been actually in the freezer as well so we've got a cup of icy salt water that's been in the freezer for a couple of hours and we're going to re retest the low temperature disconnect and see if we can't get that to work they told me they would get back to me on the the cells that i questioned them about so i could report back to you guys what we found out and they have not reported back to me on what type of cells they are since we couldn't identify them. And if we take a quick look at the Victron app to see what's going on with this right now, you can see there's 118 watts of solar coming in off of a 300 watt array. The voltage is at 48 point, well, fluctuating wildly as the clouds roll through, but Anyway, working within the parameters of the charge controller for sure and doing very well. And it's getting up there. Going to be a full charge here pretty quick. And then if I quickly show you the history of what it's been looking like for the past week anyway, you can see by these, uh, these bar graphs here that it's been getting up into float every single day basically except for maybe one or two days, but been doing very, very well. And then if we look further down, you can see across the top, every day been putting in about 380 watt hours. Fluctuates a little bit through there, but, and that shows you about what we've been using every single day too. 
So everything's been looking really, really good. Been watching this very closely. Been running a coffee maker, a little 600 watt coffee maker on it every single day. It actually pulls a little closer to 700 watts, about 660 to 670 watts when it's being used. And it's just been running perfectly. And that's all we've basically been using it for out here for the past couple of weeks. But as you can see, the charging and discharging has been just what you would want. No problems whatsoever. But today we're gonna go ahead and take a, another probe at the probe. And we're gonna stick that into that icy salt water and see while it's charging right now, if this won't go ahead and disconnect the charging. Okay, out of the freezer where it's been for a couple of hours with this icy salt water, that is very cold water. Let's stick the probe in there and see what happens. <clears throat> and that should stop charging. And it did. As you can see, it stopped. That was, and it's not charging. So that did it. That low temperature probe is working. The low temperature charging disconnect is working. Let's take a quick look at the app. And it shut those panels off. One watt. Let's take that probe back out. Put it between my fingers, warm it up. There we go. And we can see on here, that little triangle to the left of the value there is going up and it's back to charging. So that was an error on my part that I wanted to clarify with you all that the low temperature charging disconnect does work on this battery. I had simply before, as I stated, just used ice and salt water and stirred it up and I assumed that that was going to be cold enough. It was not. I put this cup in the freezer for a couple of hours and that got the temperature cold enough to do it. So there we are, 91 watts coming into this battery. Let's dump it back in, catch it a little bit more in real time. It's now in there. And within just a few seconds, that should turn off again. And there it did. Shut it down. And we can see there that little triangle on my battery monitor, not charging, not charging, not charging. In the icy, icy salt water. <laughs> As a lot of you know, I'm not really a teardown guy, uh, and that was my error. A lot of you did tell me that this is exactly how I should have done it, and now I've learned. And now that probe is between my fingers again, warmed right up, back to charging. So we can report back to you that <clears throat> that indeed does have low temperature charging disconnect and it's working just fine. So that'd be really important for those of you that live in colder climates. It's not an issue out here, but where you are, it may be. So everything's working just fine now. And we can see that that thing just clicked over into absorption mode, which is that yellow light. 93.6% full. Battery voltage reading 13.39 and absorption. And when the sun comes out and hits that with a little bit more wattage, you'll see that uh, that voltage will jump right up to about 14.2, which it must have done briefly anyway to get it into absorption. So I really wanted to follow up and, and show you guys and do it properly and that was the way to do a low temperature charging disconnect got to put that ice salt water in the freezer 
Uh, I think I had it in there for just about two hours, like I said, and that made it really, really a thick, thicker type of solution that was well below freezing. And that did it, that did the trick. So the only thing I'm waiting to hear back on is what type of cells those truly were since we found them with those identification numbers ground off of them. And if they ever report back to me, I will let you guys know what they said. So mission accomplished. And thanks for all of you guys telling me for, to exactly how to do this. So I will know in the future if I ever tear a battery down again of how to do that. So 54 watts coming in. If it wasn't so cloudy, it would be trying to pump in more uh, energy into that battery. But right now it's a little cloudy. So that's all I can get out of 300 watts. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Okay, I just slipped that cover back in. As you recall, I had to cut that entire cover off in order to, to get those cells out of there during the teardown. Um, and I will, now that everything's working correctly, I will probably go ahead and, you know, make this a more permanent fit, glue it, glue it up with some good glue or tape something along those lines to make this not, you know, be so flimsy there. But the battery works absolutely as it should. And like I said, been running it full time for the past two weeks since we did the initial review. Everything's looking good. It's up to pretty much 100% full charge. It will get there today, even in these low light conditions. But that was nice to see and nice to be able to report back to you guys for any of you that have been considering this battery uh, now that they have the low temperature of charging disconnect that it works well uh, that will give you a peace of mind for putting it into your application and i learned a lot too <laughs> mostly from you guys Thanks as always for tuning in everybody. As you can see, it's pretty gray up there right now, but all systems are pretty well charged up. So pretty nice, can't complain. All right, catch you guys on the next one. Aloha. Yeah, now I know how to do a low temperature charging disconnect properly.